Quick wrap of the top developments coming in from Ukraine. It's a story that's moving extremely rapidly. Only channel reporting from the ground. Let's get you the key developments at this point of time. Russia has mounted its offensive at an even bigger scale on day two of the invasion. The Russian military has captured the site of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant as well as other energy facilities uh, that lie between Ukraine and the Belarus border and the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Ukraine president's office claims that it could be one of the most serious threats in Europe at this time. Big development number two, six massive explosions reported from Ukraine's capital, Kiev. According to the Ukraine government, attacks have been carried out by crews and ballistic missiles. Ukraine has also claimed to have shot down a Russian aircraft over the country's capital of Kiev. Ukraine confirms that at least 800 Russian army personnel have been killed. Ukraine has also shot down six to seven Russian helicopters, it claims, and destroyed over 30 tanks, it says, in an attempt to defend themselves from this invasion. Well, the invasion is continuing at full scale, and the numbers of casualties and destroyed equipment are still in the realm of claims. After a cyber attack on the Ukrainian government websites yesterday added to the woes of the country, data wiping malware has infected hundreds of computers there. According to researchers, malware attacks could be in preparation for as much as three months now. And now, anonymous hackers have declared cyber war on the Russian government and claimed responsibility for an attack on the website of Russia's state-owned TV channel RT. Well, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is likely to hit the Indian economy badly, derailing efforts to recover from COVID-hit economy. Crucial factors to look out for will be the rise in crude oil prices, surge in gold, gold prices, crypto prices, currency prices, everything. It's all going to be impacting your everyday life. And I'm beginning this broadcast with two contrasting images that show you just how different things are between yesterday and today in Kiev. Just look at these two images. Yesterday, Kiev, the road packed with vehicles, people trying to get from one place to the other, huge jams on the streets of Kiev, and today it's a ghost town. People are inside, nobody is outside, very few vehicles plying on the road. There's a curfew in force, and it's a haunting, haunting image of how things have changed for the country's capital, Kiev, in just a matter of 24 hours. From a bustling highway through Kiev to a haunted ghost town. That's what's happened in a matter of 24 hours because of the Russian invasion. And we've got some breaking news coming in now. Sources in India's Civil Aviation Ministry are telling India today more about the evacuation plan of over 16,000 Indians uh, there via Romania, via Slovakia, via Poland and Hungary. The evacuation plan will be on in the absence of an air bubble. Arrangements with these countries that share land borders with Ukraine, depending on the demand from the External Affairs Ministry, is being carried out. Charter flights could be mounted from these other countries, Slovakia and others, and they may be taken up with embassies in those countries for necessary clearance for landing of flights. I want to put out that map. Let's, let, let's get our producers to put out the map of all the countries. We've got graphics of a map. I want to show that map. I need that map on air right now on priority, showing the countries through which land borders are, are shared with Ukraine from which the evacuation could perhaps take place. India Today's Polomi Saha with me live. Polomi airports shut in Ukraine, many of them destroyed. Land borders, the only way out for 16,000 Indians. The in External Affairs Ministry, Civil Aviation Ministry, coordinating with all these countries for a possible air bridge with multiple countries, Slovakia, Poland, Hungary, Romania, to bring Indians out. That's right. Uh, remember, uh, Shiv, yesterday when Foreign Secretary Harsh Shringla, in fact, reached the media late at night, he did mention that we're in touch uh, with these uh, countries and their governments in order to be able to facilitate the entry of Indian nationals from Ukraine into their countries and then possibly mount an evacuation plan from uh, their own. So these are those countries that share the western border with Ukraine. We what do the Foreign Minister. Foreign Minister S. Jai Shankar spoke with uh, the Foreign Ministers of Slovakia 
uh, Hungary and Romania last night itself. So right now the Ministry of Civil Aviation is uh, basically in touch with uh, the Ministry of External Affairs because it's the MEA which will have to seek clearances via their embassies from these governments in order to be able to land flights in their country. We can mount charters in the absence of any air bubbles. We do not have air bubbles with Romania, Slovakia, Poland and Hungary at present. So we need special permission to land flights in these countries. So that is something that the NEA will facilitate by our embassies on ground over there. So it could be charters or then of course, uh, as uh, Foreign Secretary Harshringa also mentioned, uh, the possibility of, uh, in fact, bringing uh, the Indian Air Force into action is also there. So we need those landing clearances, which uh, we are working on at the moment. And any idea when this is going to kick into action, uh, Polomi? Is it going to start today itself? Not right away, uh, Shiv, because we're working on getting our Indian nationals, obviously, uh, to uh, the border, to the western border. Remember yesterday in the uh, advisories that we sent out, we basically asked them to stay if they're in a secure place already. Just stay over there, but if they're in transit and if they're moving towards Kiev, to move back towards the western border and reach there. Our uh, diplomats have reached uh, these uh, countries as well, mostly those who are Russian-speaking. Uh, they are there, they're working with the government on the ground in order to first facilitate the entry of Indian nationals from Ukraine, evacuate them from Ukraine into these countries, and then, of course, uh, the possibility of evacuating them via flight uh, kicks in. Thanks very much. Uh, the land evacuation plan is in uh, is in force right now. Stranded Indians, as you can see in some of these pictures, in their hostels, in their institutions, are waiting to come back. India had issued multiple advisories, uh, you know, for them to leave Ukraine. They're stranded at this time, and the Indian government will do everything it possibly can to bring them back as quickly as possible. Uh, 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 it is the government's duty to help them, and the government will be doing that as quickly as possible to bring them back. Back. There have been some protests, there have been some, uh, you know, there has been some discontent and heartburn as well. But advisories have been issued and now the entire Indian rescue machinery is out in full force to bring those back. So parents and students listening, hold on, hang in there. The country is out to get you back. Okay, now I want to show you, now I want to show you the threat that is upon Ukraine right now in terms of where all the attacks are actually taking place. Let me show you this map to give you a sense of where things are actually at. It may look like attacks are happening only from one side, but that's not true. Take a look at this map. You've got an attack happening towards Kiev, and that's where uh, you're seeing the air defense, uh, air defense guns uh, engage with aircraft from Russia. That's one of the main sites of attack. And Kiev, remember, is not even on the border. It's way inside. Then you've got, uh, you know, a port uh, attack on the port city of Odessa. This is happening via the sea route. There are bombardments happening uh, from ships. Uh, the Crimean Peninsula, uh, you know, where Russian troops have been moving towards uh, the Kherson from the Crimean Peninsula. This is where it's also happening. They're also entering through the Donetsk area, which is uh, entering through the Luhansk uh, uh, part, uh, you know, very close to the rebel-held territories in eastern Ukraine. So all of these are entry points for Russian troops. Whether it is Kiev, whether it is Odessa, whether it's Luhansk and Donetsk, all of these places are entry points from which Russia is actually pushing in its forces. And in fact, the speed with which forces have been pushed in in all these places is apparently so high uh, that in many places the Ukrainian defense forces didn't even notice as tanks and armored personnel carriers have been rumbling through. Let's show all arrows. Let's show all arrows on that graphic to show you where all those attacks are actually happening from now. Okay, as Russia launches this full-scale invasion of Ukraine, over 137 Ukrainians the country claims have died in the fighting on day one, and at least 316 people are wounded. Russia has stepped up the offensive on Ukraine with a series of attacks across the country. Explosions continue in various parts. Air bases which were attacked yesterday have been destroyed today. Russian shells have destroyed several pockets of uh, the urban centers, the big cities. Attacks have been intensified. 
in the capital of Kiev, as all of these pictures have been showing you, where massive explosions have been witnessed due to the missile strikes by Russia. The series of missile strikes took place at an area which has multiple high-rises, increasing the fear of casualties. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant has also been captured by the Russian forces. And amidst all this chaos, huge traffic jams which were witnessed yesterday have given way to ghostly streets in Kiev like we showed you right at the start of this broadcast. And the only place where you're seeing crowds are in bomb shelters, metro stations, supermarkets and ATMs. I asked you today, у 27 лідерів Європи, чи буде Україна в НАТО? Запитав прямо. Всі бояться, не відповідають, а ми не боїмось. Ми не боїмось нічого, не боїмось, захищаючи нашу державу. Ми не боїмось Росії, ми не боїмось говорити з Росією. Ми залишаємось наодинці. У захисті нашої держави. Хто готовий воювати разом з нами? Чесно, не бачу таких. Хто готовий дати Україні гарантію вступу до НАТО? Чесно, всі бояться. Sources in Ukraine tell India Today TV that Russian troops this is the plan of action that has been unfolding overnight, and this is what it apparently looks like. Our sources on the ground, our contacts on the ground in Kiev tell us uh, that the plan is to encircle Kiev by this morning. That has actually happened. They plan to cut off the capital's food. Let's put some visuals on air, uh, 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 you know, an electricity supply. Reports suggest Russia is making a list of pro-Russian leaders who will be put in power when a Kremlin-friendly government comes to strength. Ukraine is on the boil with Russia invading the country from three sides. Destruction, panic and chaos ensued as Ukrainians fled their homes. As Russia steps up attack, the full scale of the invasion is yet to be assessed. Ukrainian sources have revealed to India today their fears about Russia's invasion plan. Sources say Russian troops plan to encircle the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, by Friday. According to sources in Ukraine, Russian troops aim to cripple the capital by cutting off electricity and food supply. Sources also revealed that Moscow is making a list of pro-Russian leaders who will be put in power once a Kremlin-friendly government is established in Kiev. Sources say former President Yanukovych, who had fled Ukraine after the 2014 revolution, will be brought back to Kiev. Reports suggest that Russia's demands include recognition of Crimea as part of Russia, recognition of Donetsk and Luhansk as separate republics, and full demilitarization. A day after Russian invasion of Ukraine, citizens continue to seek shelter in metro stations. Military vehicles are blocking roads, inspecting baggage and vehicles before people are led through. With a total breakdown of diplomatic talks between Russia and Ukraine, the assault will bleed the nation, its citizens and the resources. Bureau report. India Today. I wanted to update some news about uh, this airstrike we uh, had experienced at four in the, mo uh, in the morning. So the strike was three hours ago. Uh, the updated information from the emergency service of Ukraine goes that eight people are uh, injured um, uh, during the strike. So um, the strike was uh, above the residential area of the left bank of Kyiv, and there were um, now we have official information that there was an aircraft, and there also was 
a missile. So two objects, two Russian objects were shot down. One fell uh, onto the private house uh, and there was a fire which is now put off. And also another one, uh, another piece of this aircraft fell uh, at the uh, nine-story building, which uh, was on fire for several um, uh, for, for, for hours. And now also the fire has been put down, and the casualties uh, are growing. We uh, see this uh, information about eight. Um, people uh, injured during this uh, event, during this uh, fire. So that is the information about the morning strikes in Kyiv, but uh, the um, information about what is going to happen is also very worrying. Now, this is what Ukraine's Kyiv, uh, country's capital Kyiv, has looked like overnight. The firebombing is likely to continue through the day today. Capturing of various uh, suburbs on the outskirts of Kiev has taken place and the Russian forces are moving in. I want you to look very carefully at these images and now I'm going to tell you about the principal players in this entire invasion. The ongoing crisis has been brought to focus thanks to the leaders of these two nations and their rise to power. The two people I'm talking about are President Putin and President Zelensky of Ukraine. The leaders of two respective countries that are now at war with the bigger one invading the smaller one. Here's the story of Putin and Zelensky. Europe is on the brink of what could become the bloodiest conflict after World War II. The events unfolding in Ukraine have put the spotlight on two leaders, Putin and Zelensky. The 69-year-old Russian president has been in power since 1999, the second longest serving ruler in Europe. Before entering politics, Putin worked in Soviet Union's spy agency KGB for 16 years, rising to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. During his stint at the KGB, Putin was embedded in Germany for five years. He also served as the director of the Russian security agency FSB, which evolved out of the KGB. After joining politics, Putin quickly rose through the ranks and became a prominent member of Boris Yeltsin's administration. Yeltsin handed over the reins to Putin in 1999, citing ill health. Putin did not look back after that. Putin served as the Prime Minister from 2008 to 2012 to bypass the restrictions imposed by the Constitution. A judo black belt, Putin is a trained shooter and a pilot. From bare-chested horse riding to taking dips in icy cold water. The leader has cultivated an Iron Man image over the years and crushed any opposition to his authority. In stark contrast, the Ukrainian president Zelensky, who started his political career in 2018, was a comedian by profession. Zelensky rose to prominence with the release of his 2015 political comedy drama called Servant of People. In the series, Zelensky played a high school history teacher who accidentally becomes the president after his video of ranting against government corruption goes viral. Incidentally, in the show, Zelensky also stands up against Russian intimidation. The show's popularity won Zelensky the presidency. Today, the two leaders are the central figures of a standoff that can launch the European continent into another war. We cannot just sit idly by and watch the tragedy unfolding. We cannot just be patient. We had to stop that nightmare and genocide against millions of people who pin their hopes entirely on Russia, on us. 
choose these aspirations, the pain of the people have been the key motive behind the decision to recognize the People's Republics in the Donbass. We are fighting for our freedom. We're defending our freedom. Be prepared to uh, protect your country on the squares of your cities and towns. We will. We will relieve the sanctions of every citizen of Ukraine who is ready to, de to protect and defend our country with weapons in their hands. Analysts believe Ukraine may not be able to hold up for long in a conventional war against Russia. The question is, how far will Putin go to stamp his authority? And does Zelensky, a product of democracy, have the will to continue the fight if Ukraine were to suffer losses. With Gaurav Sawant from the Ukrainian war zone, Bureau Report, India Today. Indian students are also going to be in focus today because thousands of them are still stranded in Ukraine. Advisories have been issued. Many of them are awaiting evacuation right now. These are some of those students who have spoken to India today. There are thousands more who are there right now and awaiting a plan. Let me show you where they will be possibly pulled out from. Remember, the airports in Ukraine are completely shut at this point of time, and therefore the Indian Foreign Office has tied up with uh, the governments and the embassies in many countries which border with Ukraine, and this is where they are likely to be pulled out from. Whether it is Hungary at the Zahoni border, border post, that's one place from Ukraine. They may uh, you know, be taken by road into Hungary. They can also be taken by road into Poland at the uh, Krakowicz uh, land border. That's another country where India has an embassy from where uh, they can take a flight and come back to India. Slovakia is the third country that shares a border with Ukraine from where uh, students uh, from Ukraine, Indian students can go across the border into Slovakia and finally Romania. So there are four different countries with land borders uh, bordering Ukraine uh, and since there are no aircraft that are being able to land in Ukraine so Air India flights can't go there and bring Indian students back it is the land borders of these four countries from which India will take students and then fly them back to India. We're taking a very quick break here on our coverage. Much more coming up on the other side.